Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and today I'll go over a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this tablet from Samsung. So to get started I'm actually going to close this just so we have a nice home screen uh, to begin with. There we go. So anyway um, I'm going to begin with a couple simple ones. So let's start off by opening up our settings which I know I had it already open. I'm going to lower down the brightness just a little bit because on the camera it looks a little bit blown out. There we go. I think that's better. Anyway, uh, so we're going to start off with the uh, display section. And in here we have a couple different things that we can uh, change. We have dark and light mode. We also have a scheduled dark mode, which you can access right here. So the mode will turn on and off based on the provided time, which is actually a pretty nice option. Now below that, we have smooth motion, which is the high refresh rate of this device. It comes enabled with 120 hertz uh, refresh rate by default. So if you like that nice buttery smooth uh, scrolling, as an example, then just keep it keep it as it is. Now, if you prioritize battery life, uh, and that's all you really care for, and maybe you just primarily watch Netflix, which doesn't really benefit you with the high refresh rate, then you might want to change it to standard, which will give you a better battery life. And obviously, the content that you will be watching, like YouTube, Netflix, and so on, will not be affected by it because all of that is basically being shown to you at like 60. Uh, YouTube 60, I think like TV shows and movies are 24. Um, so yeah. Now moving a little bit further down, we also have the screen mode. Uh, now I personally uh, think that Apple, or not Apple, what am I saying? Uh, Samsung has their colors a little bit too overdone on their devices. Now I do understand why they have this enabled by default and on the shelves and store when you have like a bunch of different devices right next to each other the one that will stand out the most will be the one that has probably the most vibrant colors but for typical day-to-day -day use when you don't have any other ones to compare to i feel like the vivid one is just way too saturated and if you for instance look at this this is just obnoxiously colorful so i personally like to set my devices to natural any kind of Samsung device, natural. That's just what I like it. Uh, I feel, like I said, like the other colors, the, the vivid ones are just too saturated for me. So they are way overdone to the point that they don't look very realistic. Uh, they basically radiate color. So that's not something that I want to have. Now, moving on a little bit further down, we also have the taskbar right here and edge panel. Uh, so these are the two different things that you will be utilizing for multitasking. So the taskbar is uh, or what am I saying? This is the taskbar. So there it is. It looks like this. It allows you to just have access to some kind of apps right here. And you can also use that if you have gesture navigation. So let's go to navigation bar, which also is one of the other things that I want to show you. And we can select it to swipe gestures, which will remove the bars and give you uh, this kind of thing. Now you can hide it by holding it, as you can see. So it removes it. Uh, in addition, Samsung uh, with their gestures does have the bar visible and the bar does have a little bit of an obstruction as you can see. So it does cut a little bit into the screen. So you can see the text technically should be going right to the bezel, but it doesn't. Uh, you can change that by going into the gesture hints and turning that off and then it will hide it altogether. But I found it that when you hide this, uh, at least my phone, which is what I use on a daily basis, has a problem where you try to swipe up and it doesn't always recognize this as an input and just I'll end up swiping out like several different times before it finally grasps the idea. Yeah, maybe by swiping from the very bottom, I actually want to go home, which obviously, as you can probably imagine, gets absolutely infuriating. Uh, here, I don't know how well it will work. I mean, obviously there was the one miss swipe already, as you've seen, it didn't actually function and it just kind of scrolled up and that was I always start my swipe off of the bezel of the of the actual display so there is no way I am messing this up so the programming right here is just shit let's be honest uh, so if you encounter this if it's if it's a big problem to you then that's something that you might want to change and in addition uh, sometimes activating the actual like task bar that you have at the bottom might be a little bit more problematic so you it's right now activating, no problem. Um, but sometimes you might encounter that it doesn't want to come up. So that's one thing. Now going back to the display where I was, there we go. 
We also have the edge panel right here. And this is something that Samsung had for some time already. And in here we have a bunch of different applications. You can add different functions to it as well by tapping on a pencil right here. Not this kind of thing. Where is it? Let me try to figure this out. Oh, there we go. So we have settings right here. And this will take you to uh, other panels that you can add that come pre-installed with the device by default. Now, also, if you have an internet connection and connected to Samsung uh, account, uh, you will have also an option at the bottom to go to the store where you will be able to buy, and yes, I mean buy more, because it's not enough that you already paid $1,200 for your device. You also need to buy it, uh, buy more. Uh, so it's a little bit of a middle finger there, but some of these might be worth. And additionally, just to kind of like be the devil's advocate, they're only like 99 cents, sometimes even less. So if you really like one of those, then go by all, by all means. It might be a worthwhile purchase as it only costs a buck. It's not much. Uh, I also want to point out some uh, important thing which I come came to actually realize after using this for some time. So as an example, I wanted to use weather, this one. And for my, at least on my phone, it posed a bit of a problem. When enabled, probably right now it's gonna work just fine because by adding it, I believe it needed to be loaded. London. Boy, I ain't in London. So you can see it's loading the weather. And again, it's London, come on. I want Krakow, come on, that's where I am. I agree. There we go, that's what I wanted. Now, there you go, finally got the weather correctly, congrats. So, uh, what you'll find out is uh, right now even, as you can see, uh, loading the weather is objectively too long. Just for a single swipe down, I believe it should be tops like two seconds, not like five to 10 that it takes. And what I have encountered myself with using this is uh, that sometimes even when I reload it, it just won't load it up at all. Whoops. So obviously that is very problematic for a widget that's supposed to give you easier access to some function like showing you the weather, where it just doesn't want to load at all. And personally, I found it that if I would do this, I can, quicker open up an application, weather application, before this loads. So obviously it really defeats the purpose of this kind of uh, toggle. So just keep in mind that when you buy some of them, they might not work as well as you might hope. That's basically what I was getting at. And one of those for me was basically widget, but it comes, this one comes free. So I guess I didn't need to spend anything, which is a benefit, apart from the $1,800 that I needed to spend on the device itself. Anyway, uh, moving on, let's go back to the settings. Uh, moving on, uh, back to the panel. There is additional thing that you can do in here, which is add specific uh, combinations of applications. So as an example, if I bring out this, which doesn't, doesn't really show much, try to add some additional applications. I'm gonna right now split screen them. So let's add something like a Spotify. Boom, that's one. Let's add another thing, internet browser. Let's add it to the top, there we go. So we are right now splitting three different apps at the same time. And then we do have some kind of option to add it. If I can remember how. I'm trying to figure out how I was able to add these. There we go. So once you close it up, it will show up right here. These are the recent applications and these are the ones that don't change. These are ones that you can add. Now you can add significantly more than you can see right here. It basically becomes a scrollable list if you wanted to. And then when you tap on it, it will open up all these uh, applications that you have added as a split screen, or like multi applications combos, and you can quickly access them without much of a hassle, which is a very nice thing to have. So it just easily allows you to access several applications at the same time if you have some kind of combos that you very like to use. Now, moving on to next, which will also be in line with multitasking and productivity, it's the decks. Now, tablets, do have the option to 
let you enable DEX at any time. So you can select start. I'll be honest, I don't remember how to turn it off. So that will be a little bit of a problematic option, but anyway. So once you enable DEX, uh, this functions as a pseudo desktop, uh, kind of like your computer would. So you have, when you open up apps, they open up in the windows that you can resize, move around, minimize if you want to, and they show up right here. And it genuinely functions as a computer would. You obviously also can add mouse and keyboard to this, which will make this feel even more like a computer. Uh, right now I'm using just a pen. I don't have a Bluetooth keyboard and I don't have a dongle that I could plug into the type C to type A, so I could use a wired or wireless mouse, but like with a dongle. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna be showing that, but really all it takes is just plugging in the dongle, plugging in your mouse or keyboard or both, and it will automatically start working without any additional steps required which is a very convenient thing. Now let's see if I can figure out how to leave this mode. Oh, that's a screenshot. Oh, come on. Ah, there we go. So in here we have, uh, once you go into basically the pseudo start, uh, you have exit decks right here. And this will go back to the typical uh, Android experience that you might be used to. Now, moving on to a, another thing that I wanted to show you, and also the last one, it's the adapt sound. Now, I won't be able to go through this fully. I'm gonna show you where the setting is and you will need to go through it yourself if you want to check it out. I will warn you, it requires headphones or earbuds for this to actually be accessible. Uh, so I don't have any connected, that's why I won't be able to show you this. So let's go into our settings and from here, we're gonna scroll to sound, sound and vibration right over here. Then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna select uh, sound quality and effects and then adapt sound. It's a very hidden section, uh, but it's a very nice option in or on all the Samsung devices. And what this allows you to do is adapt your sound to your uh, age-based hearing loss, let's call it that. So if you're aware, you, your hearing tends to degrade over time, the older you get. And this setting right here, aims to boost up the sound frequencies that you'd typically lose uh, in like different age stages. So you have a couple pre-made ones, things like under 30, 30 to 60 and 60 and over. Uh, but what I recommend actually utilizing is the test my hearing. Now this will also uh, have a benefit uh, of uh, equalizing to your earbuds, for instance, or headphones that might not be as good. So what it will do is play series of different sounds either on left or right ear. And based on that, it will ask you if you can hear that sound or if you can't. You select obviously accurately if you can or cannot. And then depending on what you select, it will tailor a custom equalizer to your hearing. Now, the reason I'm saying that it also helps out with, uh, for instance, different kind of earbuds is because some earbuds or headphones might be lower quality and might not be able to produce these kind of sounds at a uh, s uh, lower volume. So you won't be able to hear them, not because you your hearing got degraded, but because the earbuds or headphones are just of lower quality and they are unable to produce these kind of frequencies at such a, for instance, low volumes. and. Using this, obviously you won't be able to hear it because of the capabilities of your earbud, but if the tablet decides that you can't hear it and it's gonna boost it up, obviously that sound frequency that previously was not being played off or being played off very poorly on your earbuds or headphones, now is louder to the point that you can hear it and giving you a better listening experience because now you can hear more of, of the sounds that you were missing before. So pretty nice option. I highly recommend going through this, testing it out, uh, going to the test my hearing specifically, just so it creates a custom equalizer that is designed for specifically the uh, headset and your hearing. So with that being said, this would conclude the tweaks and tricks that I want to show you. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.